To check out all our products, go to musicnomadcare.com. So now I'm going to measure my action height. Um, we have on our string action gauge, which is probably my favorite tool of the gauge set. They're all really nice, but this one, this one's pretty slick. Um, this is a black background with white etching, first of all, so you can actually see it. Uh, the silver background with the black etching, I just, I've never had a great time seeing that. Um, this is so much better. Um, I really, really like it. Um, this has uh, measurements in metric, uh, thousandths of an inch, and in sixty-fourths, so no matter how you like to measure your guitars, we've got those measurements on here. Uh, on each side of the gauge, we have a uh, chart that shows you the most common action measurements for uh, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and bass, from what we would call a low action up to a high action, and several in between. So you can look on this chart here, and uh, I'm going to do my measurements in inches, and I'm going to look at my chart, and I'm going to see my finger style most common is a low action, which is 70 thousandths on the bass side and 60 on the treble. And I'm going to see that uh, my most common action for just a general strummer, you know, somebody who's playing a bunch of different styles, would be 90 thousandths on the bass side and 75 thousandths on the treble side. So I'm going to use that action spec on this guitar today. Um, there are a couple of other things on this gauge that I won't be using on this guitar, but that are handy. Uh, there's a pickup height uh, measuring scale on the corner. So if you have an electric guitar, you can measure your pickup heights uh, really easily with that. Um, and there's a conversion chart also from uh, fractions to a decimal inches and millimeters. So that'll help you if you are a metric user and you, you know, want to measure it in inches, you can convert. So in order to measure my action height, I'm going to put the guitar back in the playing position. So in order to take my measurement, I'm going to fret at the first fret, and I'm going to put my gauge behind the low E string, and I'm looking for what line corresponds to the bottom of the string at the 12th fret. So what, uh, an easy way to do this is you can take your 20 thousandths line and put it right on the 12th fret. All right, so measuring my action here, I've got 70 thousandths on the bass side. sitting at about 55 thousandths on the treble side. So I'm a, a little bit low on the treble side, uh, but I'm good on the, high, on the bass side for a finger style player. But we're not setting this guitar up that way. We're going to set this up for a more common, um, just all around acoustic action. So I'm going to need to shim my saddle up. So although on this guitar we need to raise the saddle in order to make the action what we want, it's very common on acoustics to have very high action. Uh, so many need to have material taken off the bottom of the saddle in order to bring the action down to the desired height. We have a video on how to bring your saddle down uh, in the link below. So check that out if you, have any, uh, if you need to bring your saddle down rather than up. Um, lastly, you may have to do both. You may have one side that's way too low and one side that's way too high. And so you may have to shim up to bring the low side to the desired height, and you may have to sand down the side that's too high. So you might have to do a combination of the two, but you always have to shim up to get to the proper height, and then if something else is too high, you're going to have to bring that down. So um, that's pretty common also. So you might have to do a little bit of both. If any of this saddle work, you know, seems a little bit complicated or you don't have access to the right tools to do it properly, any competent local tech or shop should be able to help you out with it without any trouble. So, so I'm going to use this 20 thousandths thick uh, fiberboard uh, veneer to shim the saddle up. Um, I'm going to cut two strips and put them underneath the saddle, which will get me up to my 90 uh, 75 action that I'm looking for. So I've done this a million times. So I'm just going to eyeball a straight strip that should drop right into that saddle slot. I'm going to cut a thin, thin piece. Just cut that off. Cut one more here. When you're cutting your strips, 
you know, they need to be narrow enough to fit down in the saddle slot, but you don't want them too skinny. I mean, you want to try to get them as close to a good fit on the saddle as you can. Um, if you have a piezo element underneath your uh, saddle, I usually would put a shim under the piezo element, not between the piezo and the saddle. That keeps a good coupling between the saddle and the piezo element itself. Uh, rather than putting a piece of material between the two that could dampen the tone or cause uneven string output. So now that I've got my uh, shims cut, I'm going to uh, cut them to length. So I'm going to want them to be the same, same length as the saddle. It's about this long. They can be a little bit shorter. They've obviously got to fit into the slot, so you want to make sure that they're, uh, they're going to fit down in. That's about perfect. So now I will detune my guitar and I will pop my bridge pins and pull my saddle out. After you've loosened your strings, put a capo on at the first fret, and that's going to keep your strings from unwinding off of your tuners and flying all over the place. Um, then you get your bridge pin puller, pop your bridge pins out. Uh, so this is the Music Nomad bridge pin puller. This thing's really great. Um, it has a, a hard uh, plastic area that grips the pin really well, and uh, it's really comfortable with uh, a grippy rubber handle. Uh, you can use it just to basically lever the pin right out of the uh, right out of the hole. It's like with a little rolling action, just levers it up, or you can put it on and just pull straight up, and it'll come right out. So now I'll get my strings out of the way, and I'm going to pull my my saddle out. You might need to grab a set of uh, end nippers to do that. And then I will put my shims down in the saddle slot. And this guitar does not have a pickup, so I don't have to worry about uh, any interference with the piezo element. If you find that you have to shim your saddle up, you know, more than, say, 30 or 40 thousandths of an inch, or, you know, if your saddle slot is very shallow, you may have to make a new saddle. Um, you don't want this saddle so far up in the slot that it's going to tilt forward. So always be sure that your saddle, technically you should have about as much out of the top as you do in to the bridge, but you will just want to make sure that your saddle is well supported. So don't just shim it up till it's barely in the slot. Um, this is a totally fine amount of shim to put in this. You've got plenty of saddle down in the bridge. It's well supported. So I'm going to go ahead and put my strings back in. Let me grab my bridge pins. When you're putting your strings in on an acoustic guitar, you want to make sure that the ball end of the string goes down and contacts the bridge plate, but it's not hung up on the bottom of the pin. Um, the pins don't really hold the string down. What they do is they hold the ball end of the string forward so that it catches the bridge plate, and that's what keeps the string from flying up out of the bridge. What can happen is as you're pushing your string in is that the pin pushes the ball past the bridge plate and then whenever you start tightening your string it pops the pin out. So you just want to make sure as you're putting your uh, string in you're not pushing the ball end way down in. It's actually stopping at the bridge plate. So now we'll go ahead and tune this to pitch. Okay, and so since I needed to come up uh, 20 thou on each side, and I put 40 thou shim in, I should be exactly at 90 and 75 on this guitar. So let's take a quick measurement. And boom, that is definitely 90. And we are spot on on 75. So math, it works. Um, you know, you just remember anytime you're going to shim the saddle up or take material off, 10 thou at the 12th fret requires 20 thou at the saddle, whether you're coming up or going down. For detailed videos on how to use each gauge during the setup process, please visit musicnomadcare.com for all our how-to videos.